Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. Remember in the comments when you were asking me what went wrong with the K-Series engine in the Honda Element that I just bought? It had no compression in cylinder number two. Well, if you had that question or if you're just curious about this K-Series engine on this stand before me, stay tuned. For those that are curious, this is a K24A1, so it's a 2.4 liter K-Series engine from Honda. Now this engine came in a 2005 Honda Element that I recently purchased, and I purchased it with a blown engine. In fact, I found that cylinder number two had zero compression to it. And when I pulled the rest of the spark plugs, they all had signs of burning oil. So for me, that was all I really needed to know. This engine was gonna go. However, I did a leak down test, but I really didn't care if the cylinder was at top dead center and I probably should have. So that leak down test is probably not so valid. But like I said, I had already determined that I was gonna replace the engine as soon as I saw the spark plugs and had no compression in one of the cylinders. I'm gonna begin my tear down in a place that you're probably not expecting. My new oil filter cutting tool works just like a tubing cutter. You just run the little thing in until it's cut all the way through. And then you can take the bits out. Be careful, you don't want to cut yourself. <sighs> Making a mess, that's probably gonna happen no matter what. I poured out the oil on the inside and didn't really find anything interesting other than this, which I believe keeps the filter element in place. Before I get too far, I'll just look and see if there's stuff in here and there's a chunk of something. I don't know what that is. It looks kind of like a little bit of yellow paint. Really? I'm not sure if that's metal or, or what it is. Could be just part of the filter from when I cut it off. But I don't see anything in here that sticks out and says, I'm your problem. For some reason, this is all slippery. I'd say this is a good filter. It's got like lots of filtering bits. But let's see if we find anything inside the filter media. Let me spread it out. Looking for tiny bits of metal. Remnants of the failure. That's what I'm on the hunt for. Looks like the filter was doing its job and likely wasn't on there very long. Doesn't look like there's hardly anything in here. Actually, the oil filter did tell us something. There isn't a catastrophic failure in this engine, or at least I don't believe there to be. There's just something causing no compression and I'm starting to wonder if maybe I've got a burned exhaust valve. Anyway, next step is gonna to be to get the cylinder head off of here. In order to do that, we have to uh, undo the timing chain. So we're gonna remove the timing cover and everything else here now. We'll start by removing this uh, crank pulley. Fine, be that way. How do you like me now? Man, Honda, you're awesome for doing that. <laughs> Make it so you just pull these right off. Using a puller is just a pain in the backside. I might be able to get away with just undoing the front oil pan fasteners. And these are all 10 millimeter. Try to keep these in some kind of order. In a way, this video can also double as a uh, timing chain replacement tutorial for a K-Series Honda engine. Nothing really out of the ordinary here. This, uh, I believe, is part of the IV tech system. valve cover was just sitting on there, obviously. Just trying to keep the dirt out before I get too happy. Just in case goo starts to come out. Ah, there you are. They usually give you some place to pry on stuff. I'm trying to keep these in order. Feels like maybe that's gotta come out. This would be the crank sensor. This engine looks amazing inside. Like for 180,000 miles, it looks really stinking good. In fact, this engine looks so good inside, I kind of want to preserve stuff. So I'm going to take the plugs out. This way I can uh, rotate the engine around and put it at top dead center. So when I reassemble it, reassemble the timing chain, it will uh, be correct. 
And this will also uh, give you a look at the spark plugs that I was talking about that, in my mind, condemn the engine. See that brown, crusty residue? That's burning oil. And it looks to be evident on all cylinders. So this is gonna allow me to rotate the engine much easier. I'll just put everything in time. Everything is lined up now. You see this line here between these two gears and then down here, there's a mark. You can sort of see that little arrow on the block lining up with that dot. So everything is as it should be. So we get this chain off of here. These are 12 millimeter. Probably, yeah, I'm gonna have to take the cams out to get the head bolts anyway. We can just let that live there for a minute. We just want to get the cylinder head off. I'm going to leave this part of the intake attached. I'm just going to disconnect this hose. I think I'm going to leave the exhaust manifold on it too. I don't really need to take it off. And actually this made it really easy to lift this with my engine crane, but we're going to have to take all these uh, cam retainers off, take the cams out, take the followers off, keep everything in order so we can get down to the cylinder head bolt so we can remove that. Quick overview here, as long as we're here, uh, these are oil passages for this intake camshaft. And there was, if you remember, that solenoid on the front there. The timing of this gear can change. So this will rotate based on the oil pressure that's coming through here and feeding through the back of it. So this thing is critically important. Don't take it apart. And if you get codes for this, a lot of times, in fact, the only thing I've ever seen is a worn timing chain. So it wasn't necessarily this that was causing the problem, a worn timing chain caused that. And what ends up causing that, at least from what I've seen, is uh, low oil. So if you run these low on oil, the timing chain could wear out prematurely. I'm not seeing that here. But anyway, there's a quick little lesson on that. And then on the back here, you've got two separate cam sensors and then these little bosses on the back of the camshafts. So that way it can monitor what's going on up there. I'm not really seeing too much that's wrong with this engine, at least up to this point. Now, I've got to get this assembly out of here. And it looks like I've got a couple of tens there, a fastener up here. That's about it. This one up here is a T5. It's not super common for these to have an issue, at least not from what I've seen. So this is somewhat of an anomaly that you find one that's bad and this has nothing to do with this. So I'm just gonna put this back in and snug it up. It's like an oil passage. I wager there's a tool out there for this. And there it is. Suddenly, there it is. I'm gonna do what I can to keep all this assembled. I already had one follower fall out. I think this guy came right out of here. I'm gonna try to keep these all together and know that I cleaned my work table before I did any of this. Now I think we can get that cylinder head off. These are the fasteners that I'm going to go for. Ooh, I had another one fall out there. Glad I saw that. Without these, the VTEC can't kick in, yo. Stay. Ooh. These are all the same length. I'll be honest, I don't know if they're torque to yield. I don't see Honda using that a whole lot. 
Another thing about leaving this stuff on is it gives me a bit of leverage on the cylinder head. Ooh, there's another hose. Probably should take care of that. These look good for the most part. This looks like an old engine. Valves also look pretty good and normal, except for cylinder number two. See how the exhaust valves are darker here than they are here? So we definitely have a problem cylinder. I'm just not seeing the obvious, I guess. Definitely an issue here though. Somehow it's lost compression. I think this is supposed to be here. Let's spin it over and watch the pistons move. Before I start spinning the engine around, I thought I'd try something. I put the spark plug back in cylinder number two and I'm just gonna fill it up with solvent. And if the solvent leaks out, then we know that the valves can't seal because if they can't hold this liquid, there's no way that it can hold some air. And we can also see where the solvent goes, whether it goes into the intake or exhaust manifold. And that will tell us a little bit more about where the leak may or may not be. It's not rushing out. And we'll just let that sit while we do our thing. And like I said, it'll, it'll let us know where it goes. Now let's just rotate the engine around and see what the pistons do. If they move like they should. Paying particular attention. Yep. Number two moves. So it's moving. So connecting rod and everything is still good. Expect, expected piston slap for this mileage, although it hasn't been that long. And look how much of the solvent has disappeared. And I checked down inside the intake runner and I don't see anything in here. So I'm gonna pop the exhaust manifold off real quick and see if I see anything down inside there which would lead credence to my theory of a uh, exhaust valve that's not sealing properly. There's some solvent that just leaked out. So I think we found it. Check it out. It's dripping right out of cylinder number two. The rest are dry, obviously, but yeah, it comes right out of there. So let's take those exhaust valves out. Oh yeah, it's chunky. It's cracked too. All right, let's check out the other one. That one's okay. It's just the one. The difference between these two valves is pretty clear. And this one here on the left is obviously the problem. Here's a look at the two valve seats. I think you can tell which one was the problem child. In fact, it almost looks like that seat might be coming loose maybe. It certainly doesn't look good. Here's something I want you to note though. You see these fuzzies on the exhaust valve? Same thing with spark plugs. That's burning oil. So fuzzy stuff like that, the fuzzy crusty, the brown fuzzy crusty, that's oil being consumed. There's something else I wanna share with you uh, about these valves. So they're damaged, but there's something else I think you should also see. And this is the valve that was in here, but you can see with it almost down there, there's a significant amount of movement in this valve here and that usually indicates a warm valve guide the valve wears too but mostly it's valve guides that will wear so it's not just a valve replacement it could be just a valve replacement but to truly recondition this cylinder head valve guides should probably also get some attention a really great question that i should answer before i end this video is what could cause an exhaust valve to burn up like this and in my experience, what causes this is the valve remaining open for too long. And over time, that excessive heat builds up and basically chews the valve up like what you saw here in this video. And eventually you lose the seal. Now with Honda engines in particular, 
Hondas do not use hydraulic valve trains. For the most part, they don't. Uh, on this case series, it does not. It has what's called a solid valve train, which means that they don't use any type of hydraulic uh, tappet or lifter in order to activate the valves. There's basically a solid connection between the two, and periodic valve adjustments are recommended in order to maintain the proper clearance on this valve. What can happen over time is, as this, the exhaust valves in particular wear, they wear up at the top along the seat here and they sit farther and farther down inside the cylinder head. But this clearance between this and the cam follower on top gets smaller and smaller. As a result, this valve can hang up for long periods of time or longer than necessary and burn up like what you've seen here today. So to prevent this from happening, periodic valve adjustments are recommended. I would say on this, maybe every 100,000 miles or so to check it, this engine had about 184,000 miles on it. So maybe it never had a valve adjustment in that time. Or what is also maybe even more likely is somebody did a valve adjustment and adjusted the exhaust valve or this particular exhaust valve too tightly. And if the, if the valve clearance is too tight, if there's almost no valve lash, this is what can happen. So there's a couple of different ways that it can happen. But the most likely cause in my experience is people that aren't experienced adjusting valves and they end up with this. Anyway, that's how I think this got that way. Now the cylinder bores do show some signs of wear. Those dark areas are a good indication of that. The crosshatch areas are how the cylinder likely looked when the piston went in when it was assembled. Uh, but these dark areas, depending upon how deep they are, would indicate whether or not that this cylinder could be reconditioned with a hone or perhaps it needs to be bored out to a larger size. If it's really, really far gone, it'll have to be re-sleeved. Once again, this goes back to careful measuring to try to figure out uh, how to proceed with reconditioning this engine. But at the very least, it needs a hone and cylinder rings, possibly a rebore or new pistons to go along with it. We can probably look at this teardown and say, Eric, why didn't you just do a proper leak down test and replace that one exhaust valve and be done with it? Well, that is a real possibility, but it doesn't address the oil consumption issue that I'm seeing throughout the engine. Those valve guides being worn the way they were can accelerate the oil consumption. Additionally, the worn out cylinder walls don't really know precisely how worn they are, but even so, they look like they need some attention as well. So that means, you know, possible, well, definitely piston rings, a little bit of machining work, possibly some pistons, uh, some valve guide work, and probably should go through and do all the valves in that cylinder head just to make sure everything was right. All of that to get done to get to where I already am with a new engine in my element. For me, that was buying time. Replacing the engine bought me time. This engine still is rebuildable in my mind, yet I'm not really the person to do that. I don't see myself doing it. I had considered for a time taking this engine and building it and putting it into the Silver Civic I have out front that's left over for when I remove the engine from that to put into my son's uh, 1999 Civic. I don't think this is the right engine for that. K24 A1 engines in elements are not always the best choice for this. They're, they're not really the performance-oriented version of the K-series, and if you want to make speed or power, well, that's the direction you would go. However, it's super reliable. Um, despite the fact that this thing had its issues, it still ran in drive, you know, so there is that. Anyway, to that end, I have an idea. Rather than just throwing this away and scrapping it all together, I'm going to give it to one of you. I'm going to put my email address down in the description and the first person to email me and say that they're going to come and get it. That's the big thing. You got to be able to come and get it because I'm not shipping this anywhere. So if you come and get this engine, I will give it to you. I will box it up, keep everything all together and make sure that, well, you can reassemble it and have a running engine if you want it. Like I said, my email will be down in the description. I'm also going to put links in the description to additional information and videos that pertain to this whole thing. Uh, I will also put a link to ericthecarguide.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have automotive questions. Other than that, thank you so much for watching today. I hope this was educational, informative, and fun. It was for me anyway. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.